This year, I don't know because of the frost. This is another berry here. It's called a bush cherry. They look like bean cherries. These are old ones that I left on the vine. They are so delicious. They get dark purple just like a bean, but it's a bush. So I don't have to grow so high. There's a potato growing out. <laughs> Isn't that fun? And our beautiful elderberries right there. So we cover it with the mosquito netting. So only the bees go inside, but the birds don't steal your elderberries that are so valuable. So we did that. And then see on this side here, see those red long berries right there? We'll see them better on the other side. Those are red cornelian. And then come over here and see the yellow cornelian. Right here, look at these puppies. These are yellow cornelian chairs. They'll get super, super yellow. See that beauty right there? There are 35 kinds of berries in here, you guys. This is a red scarlet hawthorn berry right there. Has little berries as well. Has the most beautiful deep magenta flowers. Behind Tom and Brianna there are honey berries. And those have those long droopy blueberries. On the left over there that we didn't go see, we have blueberries. So we have a blueberry patch as well. We this have... just to keep the birds out of the... Yes, that's oh. to keep the birds from eating those precious elderberries. We have a golden delicious that was hit, so I cut half of it off. But now it's coming back. What do you think of the growth, Ryan? Step inside here because this is a basin that you can walk in so the wood chips don't fall into it. So here we've got our mints. We have a little sea berry or service berry. We have a little service berry starting there. This started to die just like the others, Ryan. They started to turn black, dry up. And so I cut all the dead stuff off, like they said, sterilized the clippers. And now we've got all this new growth coming back. But I lost 100 apples on this guy this year. I was so sad to have to cut it off. And who knows what's growing as a windbreaking wall along this side here. What do you think? <laughs> David already knew that. Isn't that beautiful? That's going to be a big wall that will stop the wind. It's really wonderful to have that. And because our wind comes down the canyon, I put it on the east side. And along it, look what's growing. I'm going to pick a couple. These are our wild blackberries, like they have in Oregon and Washington State. These beautiful berries are so delicious. But the ones that are outside the garden are drying out. While these little beauties here, and you only pick them when they fall right into your hand. Otherwise, they're not ready. Okay? So wait until they fall right into your hand. Sometimes a little too much. And that's when they're going to be sweetest. Okay? You don't want to pick them if they're not falling out into your hand. And that's when you get the sweetest little blackberries. For everybody. They're just so fun. <laughs> And I did wash my hand before, you guys. Mm -hmm. Let me give, I want Ryan to try the, whoops, the really sweet one, Ryan. The really, really sweet ones. Because that's when you eat a blackberry. Not when they're shiny and juicy, <laughs> but when they're, they're almost drying. That's when they have all the sweetness in it. Just like grapes, you don't pick them until after the first frost. Okay? But see how wonderful this effect that's creating in here? This was a twig five years ago. It's called a black locust. It has the sweetest smelling white flowers in the spring that just droop down like wisteria. Gorgeous. But this is the fastest growing nitrogen fixing, so it gives nitrogen to the other trees growing here. Tree there is in Utah. This can sequester carbon in a city like you wouldn't believe. They only grow in five years this big. So you want to have these kinds of trees, you know, that grow really well without much water that love it here. And it doesn't shed like the honey locust, but it creates these gorgeous beautiful leaves. I love it. You told me, Chad, at first you didn't like all those leaves. You have to blow off your property of <laughs> no, that honey constant. locust. <laughs> but what do you love about that honey locust now? Everything but the mass. But you love the shade. The shade. Oh, absolutely. Yep. That's the, the best shade. part of having these locusts. And they grow so fast. So when we build these new houses, we should put locusts up and down the streets because these beauties are so amazing. But then put them around all your fruit trees and they'll feed them nitrogen. They're pretty hardy too. They're very hardy and they're very drought resistant too. So there's all these benefits of growing these kind of trees all over Utah. How tall is yet? Oh, I don't know yet. Every year I'm amazed how much taller it's getting. Yeah, it's a lot bigger this year. It's a lot bigger, isn't it? It's amazing, you guys. And then we have the blackberries growing along. You know what I call the blackberries? 
the blackberries, you guys, aren't just full of vitamin C and everything else. The blackberries are your natural barbed wire. <laughs> Who's going to come crawling through that? <laughs> right? Although I invite the deer in here, you guys. I have so much food like comfrey, just like the grasshoppers and slugs. Eat my comfrey. Help yourselves. Come in, little mommy and babies, you know. Oh, they do, right they do don't they? I know. The they come and eat your apples. There's mm -hmm. nothing on food. the bottom. Long can reach. <laughs> no apples, no so, nothing, so don't you think we could share a little bit with them, right? Well, the beauty of it is I don't have to go down and clean up anything. There you go. But the leaves. But, so but on the, the stone fruit, they'll leave you the pits. Oh, really? so, I put my peaches and apricots outside, and the deer left me the cute little pits to replant. Isn't that funny? It's just so amazing what nature does, Ryan. I love it. So keep walking all the way to the end, and then go left, you guys. Let me see if I missed anything in here. There's another pear tree. There's a sand cherry. So I'll show it to you on the other side. That's another native to Utah that's so delicious. I love sand cherries, and it's drought-resistant. I figured out I have 11 kinds of cherries in this garden. These are goji Just cherries. Too? Those are gojis. Yep. I have 11 kinds of different kinds of cherries to eat in here, you guys, at different times of the year. Thank you so much for having us here. Oh, we, we thank you, We do have to take off, though. My sister needs help. So. Okay. All right. Yeah. Thanks for coming. Please do. Yeah. Just yeah. call yeah. me. Grab my card. Okay. Is Eric. that there? Yep. All right. Sounds good. Call me anytime. All right. He put us in the City Weekly. He wrote an article. And I could do it again this As year. the most sustainable garden in Utah County. And design school. Yep. In the City Weekly. Thank you, hon. Yeah, thank you. Love you. Take care, Eric. Okay? That is so nice of him. This is what I call my bird. You bet, Tom. This is my bird station. So I like to feed the birds here. But I make the doves and the quail eat on the tray up there because I don't want the neighbor cats to kill them. I found too many dead doves down here. I was like, no, 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 eat in the tree. The little birds, they know to come in that bird feeder. But boy, when this was loaded, and look at the grapevine growing through here, Ryan. Look at this. <laughs> it's all grapes. I love it. I just love the effect it's creating. Look at the mushroom sizes. Look at this one over here, David. Look at this. Yeah, yeah. You guys, come over here. Amongst all the cover crops, look at the size of this mushroom, you guys. Oh, wow. Look at the size. That's my hand. Yeah. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah, it is. And that just comes naturally in this environment. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, big. I've got a mushroom that big in there. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> and see all the vegetable plants you can plant. We planted these a little late, so they're just starting to bloom. It's okay. We do cover crop again. Come freeze. This is a sand cherry there, a younger one. A peach tree. Cranberry. I mean, crab apple, sorry. This was another little apple that struggled and got hurt, but now it's starting to grow new growth and come back strong. This is a row of gooseberries all through here. Gooseberries are very, very high in vitamin C. So we love gooseberries, so they all grow on this side. They do better. When this was all hot six years ago, I had to create the shade you're going to see over there. It was way too hot facing south. And so a lot of these little berry bushes would have cooked. They would have had a hard time. There's the poor little sea berries we had to transplant from the sidewalk. As you can see, they're really drying up. If they'll survive, it would take a miracle. We're doing everything we can, but honestly, that's such a big loss. They cost so much money. This is a patch of golden raspberries. This will be the second set this year that we get to eat as soon as those guys come out, but they're just starting to come back. Did you transplant those or were they growing as a root system that goes out so, to the sidewalk? So they went out to the sidewalk as a root system from the mother you're going to see in here with berries. Uh -huh. And they went out to the sidewalk right up against the sidewalk as far as they could go. And that's why they grew right on the edge of the sidewalk. But I had them tied back so they're only about three inches on the sidewalk. He still made me dig them out. Look at all the birds playing in the there. City? Orem City? Orem Preservation Officer. Yep. Made me do that. Even though his supervisor, who got promoted came through here last year and said, you have the most beautiful landscaped garden I've ever seen in my life. There's not a weed in here, nothing. He said, you don't have any violations, you're just fine. But he, this new one, he made me take all these out. That broke my heart because I love, they're the most valuable berry on the planet. I didn't want to lose those. So these are all our gooseberries through here. They have omega-7 in the sea buckthorn. Yeah. So here's a sand cherry. Here's another nitrogen fixer besides the locust and your beans and your lentils and everything. This is called a Siberian pea shrub. In April, 
all my neighbors and I was giving Trina and everybody a whole bunch of yellow flowers because they taste like peas and they're high in protein. So we eat all their yellow flowers in April. Isn't that wonderful? And then we chop and drop their leaves to the other berry bushes and trees in the fall for nitrogen to feed them to grow faster. In fact, look here. I want to show you something that is unbelievable. Ryan, how, how much does a chestnut tree grow in one year? Do you know? A chestnut tree? Where's a chestnut tree? So right here, see that one right there? Those leaves? That's a chestnut tree. A fruiting chestnut or a horse chestnut? A fruiting, real chestnut tree from Europe. So they don't usually do very good here. Well, that one's doing okay, obviously. They grow 12 inches a year. Because he's surrounded by nitrogen-fixing Siberian pea shrub and he's in more shade, he grew almost six feet in three years. They're not supposed to do that. But because of what you're doing for him with other plants, he actually is growing three times as fast as he's supposed to. So that's pretty amazing, you know? I've seen things in here that aren't supposed to happen. It's fun to create shade and trellises with our grapevines like that off of the plum tree. Unfortunately, our plums and our two peaches and our rainier this year got hit the hardest by the hard frost. Two nights in a row, 27 degrees. Didn't get a fruit on any one of those, except the peach tree that's hidden in here, I'll show you. When you create that density, it protects them from freezing. So we'll go past the gooseberries under the plum tree, under the rainier here, who actually busted this year. So we're gonna trim them back down. Grant and I took the center out, but he still wants to grow straight up. So we're going to have to trim him back and keep the scaffoldings lower so we can have fruit. We can actually pick rainier cherries, hopefully. But they're so big and delicious, you guys. It's amazing how wonderful. So in here, you're going to have to duck a little bit, okay? So you got to be a little troll to walk through here and duck. <laughs> Come on in, you guys. <laughs> Under the peach tree. This one would normally have four inch and I have in the freezer a five inch peach that I saved from him from last year. And they are the juiciest, sweetest peaches that test so high on nutrient density on the spectrometer. So be careful here. If you see a dry, not shiny little blackberry, but be careful that they don't grab you. But see, I go for the, the ones that are ready to fall off and they're the best. But be careful when you walk through here, kind of lean towards here. This was a volunteer red choke cherry right here, although I've planted choke cherries as well. These make great syrup as well. Grandmas were doing this years ago, making choke cherry syrup. We're behind the hibiscus here that was 40 years old when we transplanted it. Have you ever heard anybody transplanting a 40 year old bush successfully? Here's another nitrogen fixing locust that was a twig. And see up behind you, Mary, right up above here, do you see up there? Those are the heart berries. They're called the hawthorn berry. They grow in our canyons. So those are hawthorn berries that I got from the reclamation nursery because a lot of these wild native ones, we need you to order and sell at your nursery. People are starting to learn of the medicinal value of all this stuff and the native not needing much water. All these reasons, they're wanting more of this food now. They want to grow these plants and trees because they know the value of it. So I wasn't able to save many peaches because they're beyond ripe and so I've got them inside I'm gonna cut some up for you guys so you can taste what, uh, they're the juiciest what kind of it you got to ask me that somebody brought me over four peach trees didn't know what they were yellow and, <laughs> it's, it's and a, I don't even know more reddish <laughs> all I care is it's the sweetest juiciest peach I ever bit into that's our that's all that matters to me right we moved down here had Alberta's Ah, and they were just amazing. The sweetest, yes. right? Yes. I'm so, guessing he could be in Alberta. What do no, you think? Alberta's don't come. They're more September, first of September. But, but everything's early this year yeah, in here. You're probably looking at a red globe. You think a red globe is red this globe, one? Uh, do they normally get to four inches wide? Depends on how many they're on the tree. A red, a red globe's about the 15th. A sun crest is about the 20th. Okay. So. All right. As far as when they ripen. When they ripen. When they ripen, yep. And Alberta's the Labor Day. Lemon Alberta's Labor Day. The late Alberta's about the 15th of September. Wow. So it's good to know those things if you want to have them sporadically ripening oh, at different yeah, times. Different. Yeah, so you plant different ones that ripen at different times, and that'll help you a lot. Most of this has been gifts or reclamation nurseries, 
or finding people who had the trees and plants. I've had to find all this stuff, you know, little by little. This is what I love about the linden tree. In France, they use the little flowers. I think they're all gone now as a honey replacement. But what they use them in England, they call it a lime tree, is they'll use the tender new leaves. Not that, that's a black raspberry. They'll use the tender new leaves as lettuce replacement. Isn't that funny? A linden tree. I know, it's so funny. And then here, a dear friend of mine who was 86 years old years ago gave me a bunch of black raspberries. Look at these. See how beautiful these little clumps are? I left these to dry on. These are black raspberry plants that are establishing right here, along with the regular blackberries along the fence line here. And see how every time I have a mineral fixer with a fruit tree to grow, I have the comfrey minerals, and I have the Siberian pea shrub right here that now has gone to pods that pop out all their little seeds like that. The Siberian pea shrub for nitrogen. But I've got to show you the best part, the most valuable berry on the planet. 190 different components, including omega-7, like David said. Come see this. Kind of duck under here. There's a little peach, so you got to duck and knock off, not knock off the little peach here. But as you come under this, there's look look up right here. Yep, there's a few peaches and there's baby sea berries there. Oh, this is orange. yep, see those berries? Those are the most valuable berries on the planet. This is mother and this is dad. But watch the little babies here. I put little flags. This is the father. He has a darker color and more bumps that are larger features on him. While the female is a lighter colored and she doesn't have those big bumps on her. But look at the berries, you guys. See all those beautiful sea buckthorn berries? That's what's so valuable. And unfortunately, the neighborhood pressure venison officers need to learn about their plants to see the value. Just watch your head, Mary. To see the value of these guys. These are very, very valuable berries. I think we were the first ones that actually had berries on the bush. A lot of permaculture people put in sea buckthorn berries. And we were the first ones that got so excited that we could create this rainforest environment. This is normally south facing sun. You guys know how hot that is in your backyard. But now you create this, it's cool. So see buckthorn berries, everybody does really well in this. I've got red currants over here. I've got more blackberries along the fence over there. Everybody does so well in here. And this was a volunteer in a, a pot that I got from the recreation nursery. I have no idea. Do you know what this tree is? I have no idea, but he did great shade, Ryan. No way. I love him. He created my biggest shade, the fastest in here. I love him. Do you ever think you'd hear that? He's not an elm, at least. Yeah, he's not an elm. He's not an elm, but he is a box elder. But look how beautiful he is. And he did my shade I needed for my sea berries. I love him. Isn't that funny? He was a volunteer in a pot. Had no idea what he was. <laughs> I know that this is an alder. I picked him from the reclamation nursery. I know I have an ash. Those are a lot of foraging for animals that are really good. Oh, watch out. These are the bad boys. Look at him growing all the way through there. If I don't get him along the fence line where he needs to be, he'll plant himself right here. That's what he's going for. Can you believe that? What is it? So it's the new growth of the blackberry. Oh, the others have the berries on them. So that's, that's old growth. The, the fence we're talking so about. that's the fence line. So what I have Did to you do, see thorns on? do you see the thorns on this puppy? You don't want them growing in here. So he's going to go back along the fence line back here. I'll come back with my gloves and do a better job. But if they don't stay along the fence, they get clipped. <laughs> you can't stay here. This is a horse chestnut. This is the native to Utah horse chestnut you were talking about, Ryan. He takes forever to grow. <laughs> but did you see how fast my other day? And they were planted at the same time. That guy's three years old, this guy's three years old. Look how long he takes. Forever. These guys are growing through the sky. I think I'm gonna to try to trim the back, but look at how many sea buckthorn berries we have on these guys. Isn't that just beautiful? This is the most valuable thing in this garden right here. And I just had to kill five of them. I'm so sad along the sidewalk. And it looks so ugly now out there. Also, these guys were shading my raspberry plants outside. So now they're all frying and dying. We need shade along our streets. We should value plants more than, you've got to have so many inches of sidewalk. In Linden, they don't even have a sidewalk. I love it there. And their trees and everything grow everywhere. 
we just need to teach people more about plants and how to value them, don't you think? So it's not about sidewalks are more important because that's hot. Plants are more important. Doesn't it feel wonderful to have all these plants? I love it in here. This is the best thing that I created was this top hottest section of the garden. When this got like this, I was so excited. I was just so grateful to have this established like this. I have a golden current right here. I think they've all dried up on there. Those were little baby golden currants in there. This is a choke cherry there. There's a crab apple there that used to be a spelier, <laughs> but he's not anymore. I just let him go crazy in here. But you could. There's recipes for making crab apple jelly right here. Okay. So you could take all these plentiful little berries and make a jelly out of that. Here's the, the red currants right here. I left some on so you guys can see them. But boy, you gotta like tart, you guys. Pass those around. You have to love tart to love these guys. <laughs> That's really tart. Here's your red currant. Super, super tart. Yeah, I'm not a tart person. Here, I'm gonna take this one off and give you one. Good thing they're, little. Mm -hmm. they're little, but yeah. they're tart, aren't they? They are. Those are tart little.